So, yes, that was silly. Um, second attempt. I did record a 20 something minute video of this last night and I came to edit it earlier and there's no audio because the microphone wasn't plugged in. So, trying again. I do have more ESPs. Um, I've got the D1. I'm going to try with the ESP01 as well. And I've got more displays. So, so let's take two of me trying to do the video of my Wi-Fi clocks. Now they're based. Um, these two are based on the D1 Lite. I'm going to do another one based on the ESP01. The difference between them, other than their IDs, is going to be the D1 based devices will be able to do beeping and the ESP01 based devices won't, they'll just be clocks. Now as well as showing the time there's another trick that they can do. They can receive a packet from the network and display messages and beep to get the children's attention. So these two are going in the children's rooms. There's no beeper attached yet but if you imagine this is beeping I don't have to go through the house and find them and tell them that it's time for tea. I can just press a button in the kitchen and the clocks will tell them that it's time to come downstairs to eat. So, what goes into them? We've got the D1 and we've got the LED display, which is a TM1637 based display, 4x7 segment, the colon in the middle. This particular board I don't think I can address the decimal points I've not found them yet it may be possible uh, that might be a limitation of the library I'm using so let's get these out of the way and start the construction now the pins I'm using for this it's a 5 volt LED and a 3.5 volt processor but these boards have got a power regulator on board, just here, and these are 5 volts, so what I've realised is if I put the boards one on top of the other, the 5 volt and ground line up, I can control in software which pins are clock and data. So the mod D3 and D4 on here. D3 is actually GPIO0, D4 is GPIO2. So if I mount that on there, also means should I need to reprogram it, I can simply bridge clock and ground on this end, power it up and it goes into programming mode. So let's get started with the assembly. This is a very old vice. It's been around a long time. Probably been around longer than I have. Put this in its late 40s by now. So I just need four pins and they're going to be coming out the back of the board. So I just need to solder these on here. And that's the header on the LED. Now before I solder the processor on, let's get it programmed. So to put the ESP into programming mode, you need to connect GPIO0 to D3 to ground.
so that's the module ready to be programmed. Click compile and upload, and in a moment that should flash. And that's that done. Now the flashing there is because the onboard LED is connected to one of the pins that I'm using to drive the LED. So, finished with that. Connect this up, so ground, 5 volt, well, 5 volt ground, GPIO 2, GPIO 0, go through to the LED. Hold on the first pin, line everything up, close enough, let's hold the other pins. As well as controlling the LED, these two pins here mark D1 and D2. D2 is for the beeper, and D1, when grounded, it sets it to 12 hour clock rather than 24 hour clock. But before I do anything else and get all these mixed up, I'm just going to put a 2 on there because this is clock number two, whereas these are both on clock address one. So the children's clocks behave the same, but this one might behave differently, so it has address two. I already have a header on there, which I'll probably remove later. But bring in the battery pack. Plug this straight in here. It's connecting to Wi Fi and it's connected. Now the server sends a periodic update, it sends Unix time, there we go, and various clocks will pick that up. That's very bright, so let me just turn this off, I'll turn the brightness down, which I'm doing software over here. There we go, so from the central computer I can send brightness controls, I can turn the centre display on and off, I can update the clock. It'll run for several hours, only losing a second or so of time. After four hours without any contact from the server, the LEDs in the middle stop blinking. But that's about it for the hardware, incredibly simple. And I think it'd be fun to try that with the ESP01. I'm doing a load of projects to see just how much stuff you can do with only two I.O. pins on the ESP8266 uh, and these are the 8285. So it'd be interesting to try that out. Totally unrehearsed and unprepared ESP01 clock. So I'm using this breadboard because it's got 5 and 12 volt. A few leads around. And I'm just making this up as I go. So uh, I need power. I have, re I have programmed this. It's uh, exactly the same software as is on the children's clocks. So that goes into 5 volt. Have clock and data. Clock on white. I 
And then on the ESP01, the blue is ground, yellow is plus 3.3, and the orange is the chip enable. So chip enable and power on the plus 3 volts, ground on ground, and then GPIO 0 is just here and GPIO 2 is here so there's a chance this will work let me find a USB lead that will plug into that power supply And nothing happens. That plus five, we've got data and clock connected. Got them the wrong way around. Right, so I should have worked fine, but I got my data and clock wires the wrong way around. There we go. So that's uh, the same little one pound fifty ESPO one that you find all over eBay and AliExpress and Banggood and everywhere else. So I mentioned that we have brightness control. There's a few things that the protocol does. So there I just sent a, a brightness 4 command through. We have uh, basically one byte which controls what the clock is going to do. Usually that's display the time with the little separator digit there flashing away but it can also control the brightness it can override updates for 30 seconds so if I send a, a message through that I don't want to be overwritten by the clock if it receives a clock update in those 30 seconds do that um, it'll take either individual numbers sent over the network it'll take time in Unix time format as a four byte stream individual segments so I can draw things and just send the code to display custom characters on the screen We've got beeping blinking um, they're individually addressable so if I send a blink message to display one There I've sent a combination of blink, ignore updates for 30 seconds, and draw in uh, custom characters, and got it to flash food. I could get it to send food without blinking. I can do that by changing one bit, but I can't do that until 30 seconds has expired. So there is the same message but without the blink bit set. The flashing separator, that indicates that it's received a time update in the last four hours. So if for some reason the server doesn't keep sending out its hourly or whatever synchronization signals, at the moment it's every 30 seconds, that'll indicate that it's lost connection to the network. 
Similarly, when it powers up, this is searching for networks, that's logging into the network, and that's connected to the network, so once it has an IP address, that's the display it'll get until it receives a time update. As I say, they're being sent every 30 seconds at the moment. There we go, it's received a time update. I keep going back to this video, which is gonna make it a nightmare to edit, but I've made some changes to this particular one. The blue wire just here, you can see cunningly disguised against the blue background. That's just grounding one of the IO pins and that puts it into 12 hour mode because the children don't understand the 24 hour clock yet. And then the orange wire I've got a beeper stuck on the end. Still got the tape on because, as you can see, it's half past five in the morning and I don't want to be waking people up. So I'll just demonstrate what happens when it's time to eat. Right, so I'm just going to send a message to this asking it to turn the brightness down. And now send another message, tell it it's time to eat.